Hello, welcome to our levered ETF series. My name is Rob. I've been a trader with Maverick Trading for about 25 years now, and we're going to be talking about the LABU ETF. So there's lots of great things I want to get into, but before we start any of that, I have to cover what is an ETF very quickly, just to make sure that everybody understands, because if you don't know what an ETF is, it's not going to make any sense. Whenever you hear the term the stock market, that really doesn't mean anything. Look, there's several different exchanges where stocks are bought and sold on a daily basis and they go up and down. There's really no way to say, hey, how are all the stocks doing? And so they created these things called indexes that you could actually track what the market was doing, like the Dow Jones Industrial Average, the Standard & Poor's 500, the Russell 2000. And they created these as a way for someone to look at this number and say, oh, the market went up today, the market went down today, but it was just a collection of those 500 stocks that they put in there. In 1993, a firm called State Street created the first exchange traded fund called the SPY or as was called the Spiders. This was developed to deliver the same return as the S&P 500 index. The great thing about these is that it was a stock. It wasn't a mutual fund. It wasn't index. It could be directly bought and sold like a stock at any time at a really cheap price. This was a great alternative to mutual funds. Before ETFs, if you wanted to get the same return as the market, you had to pay a company probably somewhere around a half or 1% to run the money to try to get you the same return. Now it's as easy as just buying SPY. And these have options, which is awesome. We're an options trading firm at Maverick, so we absolutely love options on these ETFs. Let me show you the S&P Biotechnology Index. The ticker symbol is SPSIBI. This was created years ago to track the performance of the biotech sector. Remember, you cannot directly buy an index. It, it isn't a thing. It doesn't exist. It's simply a something you can track. And so we need to understand before we jump into the LABU, we need to understand what is tracking. This is the underlying symbol that it is attempting to track. You can't buy it directly, so you're going to have to find an ETF to trade it. Let's say a trader wanted to trade the S&P Biotechnology Index. The problem is you can't directly trade an index. It's not something you can buy and sell. Some of these do have options that you can trade on them, but this one wants to be stock itself. So let's see if there's an ETF for it. So we take this times it by the multiplier, and it gives us this symbol, LABU. This is the symbol for the three times bullish return of the S&P Biotechnology Index. This here is the LABU, the 3X Bullish Biotechnology ETF. This ETF is designed to track the movements of the S&P Biotechnology Index. The people that run these, which is Direxion, what they are attempting to do is they're attempting to put together derivatives, options, futures, stock, and try to make three times the return. They're not buying anything. They're literally just trying to match the return as close as possible. So let's take a look at them side by side. So on the left, we've got the index. On the right, we have the ETF. And let's just watch how they trade together. You can see how they're moving really lockstep and tandem, not exactly the same but they are moving in the same general direction. This is how they work. They're trying to track the underlying. Now the LABU is moving three times more, but you don't see it because of the scaling has been adjusted for the volatility. Let's talk about when and how to trade LABU safely. We like using the LABU as a short-term trading vehicle. Basically a day trade is great, and maybe a swing trade, you know, up, up two to 10 days would be okay. Because after that, we actually start to see some real negatives from these levered ETFs. So let's go through how to use these as just a regular trade. Let's take a look at a trade on the LABU, just a regular old stock trade. This is the bullish 3X biotech ETF. So we only want to be going long this one. It doesn't make any sense to go short. We only want to be long. I'm going to be using the bar replay feature in TradingView. It's awesome. If you don't know how it works, I highly recommend watch one of our videos, figure it out. But basically, we're just going to go back in time and simulate a trade. 
So I'm just going to go, I like to just stretch this back and just pick a random point somewhere. Again, we're just going to pick a random point somewhere in here, right there. Okay. So at this point, we're going to be looking at making just a trade. So again, this is just a long ETF. So the first thing I want to do is start to draw on some, some support and resistance lines. I'm seeing that the 20 period moving average acted as a really nice resistance here. We're right up here at the 20 moving average. You can see here, we've got a candle that's kind of poking its head out above that. So let's draw another other points here that look like they are going to be significant. And ultimately up here. So these are some of the levels that we need to be concerned about. I'm just going to run it ahead and we'll see how this develops. All right, so here we go. We're starting to get some more action. We're breaking up to the higher. So again, we're looking for a long setup. Now we would expect it to have some resistance here in the right below 54 area. And it, it came up to 5250. Let's see what happens if we can break above that. And you know what, let's go ahead and set in a, a buy there. Let's go ahead and put in our buy stop. We could just catch this here at, let's call it 54.25. Okay. So let's see if that actually gets triggered. And it's pulling back, which is what these reversals do. Whenever you see this big bounce off the bottom, you typically reverse back to the moving averages. And this is actually not going to be a bad place to look to buy either, but we're gonna stick with our original buy stop at 55, sorry, at 54.25. You can see it bounced exactly where it should have. And at this point, it's now confirmed that it is no longer in a downtrend, it's in an uptrend. We wanna be looking to be a buyer. So we're just gonna stick with our original 54.25. And again, it comes up to that level and hits resistance again. You can see here that resistance is proving fairly formidable. We have no idea what's going to happen if it's going to break out above, but we'll see if we can get a trade set up here. So you can see this is just sideways price action. You don't want to have anything to do with sideways price action. It's just not worth buying. We want to get a strong price action, which is where we see moving averages both moving aggressively higher. That's going to be a really good sign that it's now time to trade this. As you can see here, we picked a time where the stock was more weak than strong. At some point, this will turn around and we'll get a national signal, but you can see we're just making lower lows here and there's just no reason at all to buy this. All right, so we got a little bit of a bounce there. Let's see if we can get back above those moving averages. And if we can get back above those moving averages, let's see if we can get those moving averages to cross and start to move higher. And they don't. You can see it just continues to fall, continues to fall. Okay, this is trading. This is what happens. We picked a random moment in time and uh, definitely are not getting any buy setups whatsoever. We wanna wait until we see moving averages that have crossed and moving aggressively higher. That is the only green light we're going to get on this. And you can see we're starting to see a little bit of positive bullish price action. All right, at this point, we now have another point where if it pulls back, it should pull back to these moving averages. That's typically what we see here. This point here is some serious resistance. 41.26. So let's go ahead and put our I stop out there at 41.50. Let's see if this one will get triggered or not. Now look, we don't know, this is why we love to use these buy stops because we only wanna buy it if it is having momentum. And the only way we'll have momentum is if it goes up. And the only way it will go up is if it has more buyers and sellers. You can see here, we're just waiting to catch these trades. Came down to that level, it bounced. And let's see, we'll call that. All right, we've now triggered. We are in every order needs a stop order. So I like to use a 20 period moving average for my stop. It's one of my favorite things to do. So basically I'm going to be trailing 
this 20 period moving average with my sell stop. And it looks like right now it's about 38, it's called 3860. It's where that sell stop is currently. So I'm going to be looking to stay in this position for as long as I possibly can. Now remember, whenever you enter trade, you have no idea if it's actually going to go up or not. You have no idea. So we want to hold the ones that go for us as long as we can and cut the ones that go against us as soon as we can. That's how you make money in trading. So I'm going to have that trailing stop where it's just going to be below the 20 period moving average. As long as it stays above that 20 period moving average, I'm going to be in it. And as soon as it breaks below, I'm going to look to be out of it. So you can see we're getting a super nice run here. Uh, this is a fantastic run on this stock. The stock's up to 60. People say, oh boy, I need to sell it here. No, you don't. This is when you've did it all right. You did everything right. Don't screw it up. You finally got, you get like one out of 10 of these are actually, even though you did all the research on all 10 of your trades and no matter how good of research you did, you only get one or two of these in that group of 10. The rest of them, you get one or two really nasty ones, and then you get four or five just in the middle. That's just the distribution of trading. So when you have one of these, you need to squeeze it for as long as you can. And by using a 20 period moving average, that really keeps you in there for quite a while. You can see until it breaks below that moving average, you want to continue to be long. Okay, and here's our exit. Here's our exit. We broke below and closed below the 20 day moving average. Let's just call that $57. Uh, that's a 15 and a half point gain here. Boy, that's, that's about a 30, 35% return here on LabU. This is a great way to use these three X ETFs as just a normal trading vehicle. I talked earlier about the risks of the LABU, and the biggest one here is the return differential. If you're not familiar with what this is, this affects all of the levered ETFs. Remember, with a regular ETF, the company that runs those ETFs are actually buying the real stock of all the underlying securities. So the company that runs the SPY, the S&P 500, they're in there constantly buying and selling all 500 shares of those at the right ratios. The levered ETFs, they're not buying any stock, so they're simply trying to get the same return using options, futures, and some stock, some derivatives. And it doesn't always go right. And let me just point out one period of time, October 2021, the biotech index went down less than a percent. The LABU went down 36%. So let's go through this differential. This here is just, we're doing monthly returns. And this is what the biotech index returned each month. This here is what the LABU. Now we could say to ourselves, okay, well, it's pretty easy. I can do math. Um, it made 4%. So if I times that by three, that's going to be somewhere around 12%. And you know what? You're right. Oh, look at that. That was about right. But we could come down to this one. All right, look, we've got... Uh, 0.05% times that by three, we should get positive 0.15%. The problem is we didn't. And if we take a look at the differentials, the differentials are actually fairly ugly here, uh, especially if you take a look at that October, that October differential of negative 34%. That's how badly they underperformed. You can see most, most months it's pretty close, but you know, you're still not getting the same exact 3x return. So you really have to be aware of the differentials. Along with the differentials, we also get higher fees on the levered ETFs. Now the biotech index has no fee because you can't buy it. There's nothing to buy. It doesn't exist. So it's just an index. But the LABU has an annual fee of just under 1%. This is going to cost you money. Every time you trade these, these fees are going to be taken out. And the thing we just are so sad about these, there's no option benefit to playing levered ETFs. We're an options trading firm at Maverick. We've got hundreds of traders trading our capital and most of them, I say 95% are using options and it just doesn't make any sense at all. So let's talk about using options. What's the best way to use options? Well, we believe that all options trading should be done on 
the IBB. That is the 1X long biotech ETF. That's where all the volume is. There's much tighter spreads. And look, it's the same trade. The options market knows that these 3X ETFs are three times more volatile. So they simply make the options three times more expensive, negating any benefit of it. If you trade options on these levered ETFs, you're going to be paying much wider spreads for really the same trade as you could get in the IBB. So all options trades should be done on the IBB. Look, long or short, calls and puts, it doesn't matter. It should all be done on the 1X long ETF. We like LABU for short-term trading. It's a great short-term trading vehicle. We like the IBB for options trading. Well, the last way that we can use these is we can use these to hedge out a portfolio. Now this is a long ETF, so we would be hedging out a short biotech position. Here's an example of how a trader could use LABU for hedging purposes. Let's say this trader was short biotech stocks. He's short about $30,000 worth of biotech stocks. However, these stocks start to turn around and it looks like they're not going to go down anymore. And this trader doesn't want to exit these short positions because they think it's going to go down more in the future. But in the short term, they want to hedge it out. All they need to do is go out on the other side and simply purchase $10,000 worth of the LABU and that will pretty much hedge out their movement. Now look, it's not going to be a perfect hedge based on what bio stocks they have in their portfolio and the differential. There is going to be not an exact one. You actually might find that you make more money off of your hedge than you lost on your stocks. That happens. Don't count on it, but it does happen. This is a great example of how to use these 3X ETFs as hedging vehicles. So those are the three ways that you can use LABU, but let me get serious real quick because this is the number one risk. Take a look at these 3X ETFs. There were some months where you could potentially lose 30 to 40%. If you make these position sizes too large, you could easily take a 40% drawdown. And if you hold it for longer, there's 3X ETFs that have lost 98% of their value in that year. So they are no joke. You have to position size these correctly. When handled properly, we love the LABU for a short-term trade, day trade, swing trade, it's just fine. Options trading, make all your options trades on the IBB and hedging is a fantastic way to hedge out a short biotech portfolio. Thanks for joining me. Take care.